Welcome to part five of our lake restoration series. Wow, part five already. Time is really going fast. Dad, it's been a year. In this video, we're adding all kinds of new residents to our renovated backyard lake. Stay tuned. our website if you'd like to get some City Billy gear of your own. A portion of every purchase will be donated to help reduce the number of people who throw all their spotty bananas in the freezer so they can make banana bread. Someday. Seriously, when is this special day that you're all of a sudden going to make 50 loaves of banana bread? And does anybody even really like banana bread? Or is it just an excuse to eat chocolate chips covered in butter? <laughs> Lay off me, I'm starving! <laughs> You know what you can do with that banana that has a spot on it? I mean, you could just eat it. It's not gonna hurt you, because if it would, then why would you bother saving it in the freezer? You could throw it in a smoothie. You could put it outside for the animals to eat. You could compost it. And if all else fails, just make your kids eat it. Just say those magic words that our parents said to us. Starving people would be happy to have that. Or you could just buy less bananas. Just stop piling them up in the freezer and fooling yourself into believing you're going to do something with them someday. I need space to store my ice cream. Don't judge me. Buying City Billy gear makes the world a better place and they're the most comfortable shirts on the planet. All right, so hopefully you've been following along as we've completely overhauled our backyard lake. Last year, we drained and dredged the lake, added fish structure, and filled the lake back up. Then this spring, we built the dock over the deep end of the lake. One of the last things left to do for this project was to expand the underwater ecosystem. The primary goal is to have a healthy population of largemouth bass. Four years ago, the lake didn't have any bass. Once we got the lake a little bit under control, my buddy Derek and I spent the summer catching and transplanting about 30 largemouth bass back to the lake. And this spring, we finally saw some baby bass swimming around. A healthy pond can sustain about 100 bass per acre. In probably two years from now, we'll start managing for overpopulation. But for now, our main focus is to establish and maintain a large forage base to keep the bass well fed so they can grow as big as possible. Now, a largemouth bass will eat just about anything it can fit in its mouth, but their diet generally consists of three main things. Smaller fish, frogs and tadpoles, and crayfish. Or is it crawfish? And we're from the north, so I'm going to go with crayfish. Now our lake already has a ton of frogs, so the things we're going to focus on are minnows, crayfish, and some more breeding size bluegill. When we first bought this place, we added 100 pounds of fathead and emerald shiner minnows to the lake. I feel like at this point we have a pretty good breeding population of minnows, but since we're going for the best fishing lake possible, we bought 20 more pounds, just because. and we'll probably continue to supplement the minnow population roughly every other year. On the same day that we got the minnows, we also bought four more grass carp to help control underwater weeds. This is on top of the 10 that we added when we first moved in. 
I know it sounds counterintuitive, but grass carp actually eat less as they get bigger. It's recommended to add more every few years. We also know that we lost at least two of these fish to herons when the lake was drained. The next thing we added to the lake is creek chubs. Now you may remember one of the first videos we ever made here at City Bully Adventures was a video on how we catch creek chubs. Hey, what's up? Thanks for checking out this video. <laughs> Stop it! I can't take it anymore! Dad, that's terrible. <laughs> So why creek chubs? Well, first of all, they're free. The boys and I go out to some local streams every couple weeks and bring home a bucket full of creek chubs. It's become a fun little hobby of ours. Another reason we target creek chubs is how much bigger they are than traditional minnows. A bass can get way more bang for his buck eating one creek chub rather than a handful of minnows. Yes, the bass could just eat a bluegill if it wanted a bigger meal but I'm trying to give the bass a variety of options so they can grow as big as possible, as fast as possible. One drawback to creek chubs is they only reproduce in moving water, like creeks. So the only way to increase their population in the lake is to catch more. But like I said, that's fun for us. And we've done it enough times now that we don't even bother letting them swim away anymore. I mean, the whole point is to fatten up the bass, right? And speaking of fattening up the fish, we had a bunch of night crawlers left over from a fishing trip in Canada that we fed the fish too. The next forage we're adding to the lake is crayfish, crawfish. And just like with the creek chubs, the boys and I routinely search local streams for a handful of mud bugs to add to the lake. Now these guys will reproduce in the pond, but at the rate we catch them, they're probably getting eaten fairly quickly, and they don't have a chance to find that special someone. So we're bringing in some heavy reinforcements. All the way from southern Louisiana, we bought 100 pounds of jumbo-sized crayfish. They were shipped overnight to the cargo area of the airport. One thing we learned along the way is that there's several different subspecies of crayfish. Some are invasive and are banned from being imported to certain states. Others can't handle northern weather and will die in the winter. But most of the people that buy these use them for crawfish boils, so it doesn't really matter. Thankfully, the company we ordered from educated us on this and shipped us what are called deep water, or signal crayfish. These guys should have no problem thriving in our lake. Now, if you're wondering if these guys are possibly too big for a bass to eat, well, that's kind of the point. Hopefully they'll have a good chance to start reproducing, and keep reproducing. Now unfortunately not all the crayfish survived the trip, but we made sure they didn't go to waste.
We even tried our hand at our first City Billy crawfish boil. And then we ordered pizza. So the crawfish boil was a dud, but the tails did make for some pretty delicious crawfish mac and cheese a few days later. And the last thing we're adding to the lake this year is a few more breeding size bluegill. When we first started this project, we had tons of bluegill and no bass. But this year, we've seen significantly less bluegill swimming around. We know the dredging was probably difficult for all the fish, and there was literally nowhere for the bluegill to hide when the water level was dropped. So the boys and I took Grandpa out to try to catch a few jumbo bluegill to help rebalance the fish population. So our little rowboat doesn't have a live well, so here's our city billy set up for transporting fish. We bought 55 gallon Rubbermaid containers from the hardware store and these homemade live well kits from Amazon. The water pump attaches to a car or boat battery and sprays water from the top to create bubbles to oxygenate the water. This becomes a temporary holding tank that keeps the fish alive until we get them home. Now keep in mind, once these tanks are full of water, they weigh somewhere in the ballpark of about 400 pounds. We transport our rowboat in the bed of my truck, so the tanks have to be kept in a separate vehicle. They'd be impossible to lift out of the boat once they're full. We keep a small cooler of water in the boat to get the fish over to the tanks. Now if you have a boat with a trailer, then this won't be an issue. And we also put a chemical in the water that helps keep the fish calm during transport. Can I get you another cocktail? Well, the lake project is getting pretty close to complete. We're still planning a zip line that goes across the lake, but summer's over. So we're gonna get a game plan together over winter and build the zip line next spring. Until then, check out some of the other City Billy projects we're working on. See you soon. City Billy Adventures testing, take one. In this episode of City Billy Adventures, we're just, we're currently in the process of adding a ton of forage to give the bass plenty to eat. In the last video, I showed you how we've been catching creek chubs. In the last video, I showed you how we've been catching and tra transplanting. In this video, we're adding a, I don't know what we're adding. We reached out to KLC Crawfish Farms in late. Uh, bleh, 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 bleh. Crayfish also. Bleh. Crayfish also. Bleh. I'll show. I'll show. Crayfish also help break down leaves and something else. <coughs> leaves and plant material. Crayfish also help break down leaves and plants that we don't want coming. This is hard. That's what she said. <laughs> Are you gonna push me in yet? No. Okay. Stand right here. I almost fell. Whoo wee. Very nervous. There's nothing to be nervous about. You gotta tell me when though, just so I can get a feeling of what is gonna happen. So there's gonna be a pause and then I'm just gonna go. Okay. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> okay, I thought you were gonna do it. I was like, no, no. <laughs> just practice, everybody. <laughs> just act like I'm dead. Just go, ah! Just like, ah! But don't go like, whoa, oh, 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 oh. Uh, 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 ah! Don't do that. Ooh. Now, our, uh, now the next. So we're gonna get a game plan together over. Hi behind you's wandering off into the desert. Oh! <laughs> Stand off. 
Come on, Cal, get him. Hey, these guys, I ate him. Whoa. You gotta keep your eyes open. I'm trying. Something's really in my eyes. <laughs> Dan, Benny. Okay. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. All right, so look down at the bananas, and then one, two, three. Look up. <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> 